This past weekend had the chance of being one of the craziest weekends we've ever seen in the college football playoff era. A few teams saw their playoff hopes crushed, but nearly every team inside the top eight was on upset watch at one point. Before we get to today's video, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you're watching this video, odds are that you love college football and odds are you aren't subscribed to my channel. So make sure to subscribe to one of the best college football communities here on YouTube. I'll be posting college football videos every day to finish the season, so make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Also, don't forget to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. We'll start with the two teams that were eliminated from playoff contention. The first being Tennessee, who lost 63-38 to South Carolina. This game was actually pretty historic. South Carolina's 63 points was the most by an unranked team against a top 5 opponent in nearly 100 years. The Volunteers entered this game as a 3 touchdown favorite. Now if I would have told you prior to the game that they would score 38 points, you would likely think they walked away with the victory but they allowed the Gamecocks to score 63 points and have over 600 yards of total offense. I mean, after the first quarter, this game was never really all that close. Although they trailed and trained the half, Tennessee was actually able to cut their deficit to only four points in the third quarter, but the Gamecocks scored four unanswered touchdowns, giving them a 32-point lead at one point. Spencer Rattler had not only his best game at South Carolina, but probably his best game of his entire collegiate career. He completed 30 of 37 passes for 440 yards with six passing touchdowns. This is the Spencer Rattler that we all expected over the last couple of years. With the way things were shaping up yesterday, Tennessee still had a shot of potentially reaching the college football playoff, even though they weren't going to be playing in the SEC title game. But by losing and especially the way they did their college football playoff hopes were crushed another team had their college football playoff hopes ended but they still had an outside shot of reaching it it was North Carolina who fell at home to Georgia Tech. Like with Tennessee, North Carolina was a 21-point favorite, but they couldn't pull off the victory. The Tar Heels actually led this game 17-0 at one point, but Georgia Tech outscored them 21-0 the rest of the way. The Tar Heels had a chance to take the lead late, but Josh Downs dropped a wide-open touchdown that would have given the Tar Heels the lead and likely the victory. Like I said, the Tar Heels were a long shot to reach the playoff, but they still had hope. Now, that hope is dead, after this loss. All right, let's get to the teams that won, but were on potential upset watch. We'll start with Georgia, who beat Kentucky by only 10 points. The Bulldogs were a 23-point favorite, but Kentucky had a shot late in this game. The Bulldogs led by only 3 points after the end of the first quarter, and they led by only 9 at halftime. Kentucky didn't score their first points until 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. They scored a touchdown and tried going for two, and it would have been a one possession game had they gotten it, but the two point conversion failed. Kentucky then drove down the field 70 yards and had a chance to cut it to a one score game with an easy field goal, but they missed a 35 yarder and that was pretty much the game. This game wasn't as close to being an upset as some of the others we're going to talk about, but Kentucky really shot themselves in the foot multiple times and really could have made this a ball game on the final drive. Ohio State ended up defeating Maryland by 13 points, but this this game was much closer than that. At the half, Ohio State actually trailed by three points. They outscored Maryland 17 to nothing in the third quarter, but the Terps came fighting back in the fourth quarter. After a touchdown with 10 minutes left, Maryland only trailed by three points. They were able to force an Ohio State turnover with seven minutes left and had the ball in Ohio State's 42 yard line, needing just a field goal to tie but a touchdown to give them the lead. Instead of driving 20 or 30 yards to at least tie the game, Maryland got only four yards on three plays and turned the ball over. Ohio State was able to drain clock and kick a field goal with less than a minute remaining, giving them a six point lead. Still, Maryland had the ball with a minute left, needing a touchdown to give them the victory. But a fumble in the end zone allowed Ohio State to score an additional touchdown, putting the game out of reach. The way things were going in that fourth quarter, it honestly looked like Maryland had enough in them to pull off the upset. Had Maryland escaped with the victory, Ohio State would have been on the verge of potentially missing out on the college football playoff. They likely would have been knocked outside the top four, and a loss next week to Michigan would have ended their chances entirely. But the Buckeyes were able to hold on for the victory, and they head into next week 11-0. Speaking of teams 11-0 and 
country next week, we have Michigan, who escaped with a thrilling victory over Illinois. Michigan was a 17-point favorite, but they needed a game-winning field goal to give them the victory. Illinois hung in there with the Wolverines as they actually took the lead entering the fourth quarter. Michigan made two field goals, but they still trailed by a point with three minutes left. If Illinois was able to get just one or two first downs, they end the game and they escape Michigan with the victory. But on the first drive, they actually lost three yards and were forced to punt. It was a pretty bad punt too, as Michigan was on the 50-yard line, needing only about 20 yards to get in a field goal range. The game and their season was on the line, as they had fourth and three with 50 seconds to go. But JJ McCarthy completed the pass, and Michigan was able to get into field goal range, setting up a 35-yarder. Jake Moody was able to connect for his third field goal of the quarter, and Michigan was able to secure the two-point victory. But had it not been for that fourth down conversion, or yet another made field goal, Michigan would have lost this game, and they would have fallen out of the top four. Considering they have to go on the road to Ohio State next week, and their number one player, Blake Corum, might be nursing an injury, this is a game that Michigan really could not have afforded to lose. Had they lost, and lost next week, that would have eliminated them from playoff contention, but the Wolverines are still alive, regardless of what happens next weekend. So we have both Ohio State and Michigan entering next weekend's matchup at 11-0. At this point, whoever wins likely locks up a spot in the college football playoff. Whoever loses will take a big hit, but they'll still have an outside shot of potentially reaching it. This game is going to have a lot more hype, considering it's going to be number two versus number three. Looking back though, it's really crazy that both of these teams could have lost, and next week's matchup would have been a whole lot different. Plus, if Ohio State and Michigan would have both lost, what would the top four even look like this weekend? This next one was probably the craziest finish of the entire day, as TCU defeated Baylor by one point thanks to a game-winning field goal as time expired. This game was truly back and forth the entire day. Baylor got out to the early lead, but this game was tied at the half. Then, TCU took the lead in the third quarter, with Baylor reclaiming the lead in the fourth quarter. Down by eight points, TCU scored a touchdown with two minutes left, but failed the two-point conversion. All Baylor needed to do was get one or two first downs, and this game would have been over. Instead, TCU forced the Bears to punt, setting them up for one final drive. With only 15 seconds left, TCU ran a play and was stopped short of the first down, forcing the clock to continue running without any timeouts. The Horned Frogs had to quickly get into field goal formation, as Griffin Kelly kicked a 40-yard field goal as time expired. TCU escaped with a one-point victory as they remain undefeated on the season. Had TCU lost this game, their playoff chances would have been nearly shot. But they're still 11-0 and they're in the driver's seat to reach the college football playoff. We'll wrap up this video with one final team that was on upset watch the entire way. In one of the more exciting battle for LA's in recent memory, USC knocked off UCLA by only three points. They needed 48 points and 650 yards of total offense to barely pick up the victory. Now this game was truly back and forth the entire way, as there were 93 points scored over the final three quarters. USC led majority of the second half, but UCLA just kept battling back. After the Bruins forced the Trojans to punt for the first time all game in the fourth quarter, it looked like the Bruins were on the verge of upsetting the Trojans and knocking USC out of playoff contention. With two minutes remaining, UCLA had the ball on their own 11-yard line, needing to go 90 yards for a game-winning touchdown. But all they had to do was get into field goal range to at least send the game to over time. Dorian Thompson Robinson was able to push things down to the 43 yard line, but he threw the game ceiling interception with a minute and a half left. For USC, not only did this clinch a spot in the Pac-12 title game, this kept them alive in the playoff hunt. With Tennessee being eliminated, USC is now going to climb to number 6 in the polls. With how things are shaping up in front of them, they're still very alive for the playoff hunt. If TCU were to lose, or LSU loses to Georgia in the SEC title game, the Trojans look like they're going to be one of the final four teams to crack the playoff. Had they lost to the Bruins though, their chances would have been completely shot. Instead, they're still alive, and potentially two wins away from their first ever trip to the college football playoff. So, looking back at the weekend, the only team from inside the top eight that was eliminated was Tennessee. But there is a reality out there in which Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, TCU, and USC all could have potentially lost. Now, even if all five of those teams wouldn't have lost, there was a realistic shot that at least two or maybe three of those teams could have fell yesterday. Now, had we seen two or three teams inside the top seven lose, the college football playoff would have been completely shaken up. 
we could have seen Alabama climb a few spots and potentially still have a shot at reaching the playoff. Clemson, who still only has one loss and is still alive in the playoff hunt, they would have had a much better chance of climbing their way in. Personally, I'm kind of bummed we didn't see all these teams lose because this would have given us our most chaotic ranking, probably in college football playoff history. Instead, nothing changes aside from Tennessee falling out, and LSU and USC are both going to move up a spot. Now, next weekend is still likely going to give us a whole lot of chaos. Ohio State and Michigan face each other, so one of those teams is going to fall out of the rankings. Who knows, maybe Iowa State plays their best game of the season, and TCU's on upset watch. LSU still has to play Georgia in the SEC title game, so that game will determine one or potentially two playoff spots. Then you have USC, who still has a difficult schedule, as they gotta face Notre Dame and likely Oregon in the Pac-12 title game. So, there's still a lot that has to be determined in the college football playoff rankings, but yesterday could have been a historic day in college football. So what are your thoughts on the near chaotic weekend we almost had? Were you hoping one or two of these teams would have lost to give us craziness in the next college football playoff rankings? Let's say four or five of those teams would have lost. What do you think the college football playoff would have looked like entering next week? Plus, after the crazy weekend, what is your final guess as to who the four teams are going to be in the final college football playoff rankings? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comment section down below. Before you leave, make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to my channel. If you love college football, this is definitely the place for you. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm posting videos every day during the season, so make sure to subscribe if you call yourself a college football fan. Also, make sure to drop a like on this video as well. It helps out with that confusing YouTube algorithm and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, it only takes a second to do. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.